starting off with, this is the 140 to 170 hour, and we are starting off with question by attorney on the left, who is defense attorney, okay? They don't claim gain turf, that's correct, do they? Some do, that's correct. So it is not true to say that all members of UBC are wannabe brats members. I guess you could say that. All right. When you say that you've seen Mr. Ortiz, I think you used the word hangout. What does that mean? What does the term hangout mean? Well, Carlos and I run into each other quite a few times in the hood area. I've seen him. I've talked with him at parties in the streets, and they are not here. These are not detentions of arrest. These are just part of our job from gang intelligence unit is to stop and talk to kids, you know, identify their monikers, identify the gangs, identify different things about them and build intelligence files on them. So if we drive down the street and, for instance, see Mr. Ortiz with some other gang members, we're going to stop and talk to them, find out what's going on, what they're doing, why they're out there. And Carlos and I have made contact with each other a lot of times. And when you say, hang out. What do you mean hang out? Someone standing on the street? Standing on the street with his friends. Okay, all right. What did you say UBC stood for? Unusual bad creation. Could it also be us bad creators? I'm sure that someone could say that. At the time of my, the information, the intelligence that I gathered, from the gang intelligence unit. That was the name that they were using. Creators, referring to the creation of these so-called little pieces of art. I imagine they can be. It could be anything that they wanted to make it. All right, thank you. Any redirect? No, your honor. All right, may the witness be excused? Yes, I'll have him sit as my investigating officer throughout this trial. All right, all right. Do you have another witness? No, at this time, we're going to call Dr. McAdam, but I believe a stipulation is in order. Counsel, may it be stipulated the doctor from the coroner's office be deemed to have been called as an expert and would have testified that he performed an autopsy on the body of Vida Ramirez, also known as Cuddles, the victim described by the witnesses in this case and determined that the cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds, specifically four of them. Gunshot wound number one was to the abdomen. Gunshot wound number two was to the right groin area. Gunshot wound number three was to the right thigh. Gunshot wound number four was to the right forearm. And that the order that the autopsy was performed and described as one, two, three, or four has no significance, but only for labeling purposes. So stipulated. All right, that's accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, the lawyers have stipulated to those facts. You'll accept those facts as having been conclusively proved. People would like to have all the exhibits marked so far admitted. That's 1 through 16? I believe so, yes. There's an objection briefly stated to, may I have just a moment, Your Honor? Objection to number four. Pardon me? Number four. All right. The objections are overruled. I through I-16 are admitted. Thank you. People rest. Your Honor, may we approach at this time concerning an 1118 motion? Yes. Do you want the reporters? Please. Your Honor, at this time, I'm moving to dismiss the information under 
Penal Code Section 1118.1, specifically, I'd direct the court's attention to the four attempted murder counts, which allege a willful, deliberate, premeditated attempted murder of the surviving witnesses, Yvonne Hernandez, Adriana Mendoza, Ramona Vasquez, and Luis Sandoval. I move that the people have failed to show that there was a specific intent by the shooter to kill these four persons. I think that the prosecution theory that there was a specific intent to kill Louis Sandoval has been shown and that that intent can be transferred to the ultimate victim, Vita Ramirez. However, I do not believe that independent of that, there is a specific intent shown with respect to each and every one of the four attempted murder victims. Furthermore, whereas there may have been a willful, deliberate, premeditated murder with respect to the transferred intent victim, Vita Ramirez, I don't believe there's sufficient evidence to show willful, deliberate, premeditated, attempted murder. All right, let's try that one again. Starts with question by defense attorney. Attorney on the left. <clears throat> when you say hangout, what do you mean hangout? Someone standing on the street? Standing on the street with his friends. Okay, all right. What did you say UBC stood for? Unusual bad creation. Could it also be us bad creators? I'm sure that someone could say that. At the time of my, the information, the intelligence that I gathered from the gang intelligence unit, that was the name that they were using. Creators referring to the creation of these so-called little pieces of art. I imagine they can be. It could be anything that they wanted to make it. All right, thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, may the witness be excused? Yes, I'll have him sit as my investigating officer throughout this trial. All right, all right. Do you have another witness? No. At this time, we were going to call Dr. McAdam, but I believe a stipulation is in order. Counsel, may it be stipulated Dr. McAdam from the coroner's office be deemed to have been called as an expert who would have testified that he performed an autopsy on the body of Vita Ramirez, also known as Cuddles, the victim described by the witnesses in this case and determined that the cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds, specifically four of them. Gunshot wound number one was to the abdomen. Gunshot wound number two was to the right groin area. Gunshot wound number three was to the right thigh. Gunshot wound number four was to the right forearm. And that the order that the autopsy was performed and described as one, two, three, or four has no significance, but only for labeling purposes. So stipulated, all right, that's accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, the lawyers have stipulated to those facts. You'll accept those facts as having been conclusively proved. People would like to have all the exhibits marked so far admitted. That's 1 through 16? I believe so, yes. There's an objection briefly stated to... May I have just a moment, Your Honor? Objection to number four. Pardon me. Number four. All right, the objections are overruled. One through 16 are admitted. Uh, thank you. People rest. Your Honor, may we approach at this time concerning an 1118 motion? Yes. Do you want the reporter? Please. Your Honor, at this time I'm moving to dismiss the information under Penal Code Section 1118.1. Specifically, I direct the court's attention to the four attempted murder counts which allege a willful, deliberate, premeditated attempted murder of the surviving witnesses, Yvonne Hernandez, Adriana Mendoza, Ramona Vasquez, and Luis Sandoval. 
I move that the people have failed to show that there was a specific intent by the shooter to kill these four persons. I think that the prosecution theory that there was a specific intent to kill Louis Sandoval has been shown and that that intent can be transferred to the ultimate victim, Vita Ramirez. However, I do not believe that. Independent of that, there is a specific intent shown with respect to each and every one of the four attempted murder victims. Furthermore, whereas there may have been a willful, deliberate, premeditated murder, with respect to the transferred intent victim, Vita Ramirez, I don't believe there's sufficient evidence to show willful, deliberate, premeditated, attempted murder. Okay, let's try it one more time. Same one. Question by... Turn on the left. When you say hangout, what do you mean hangout? Someone standing on the street? Standing on the street with his friends. Okay, all right. What did you say UBC stood for? Unusual bad creation. Could it also be us bad creators? I'm sure that someone could say that. At the time of my, the information, the intelligence that I gathered from the gang intelligence unit, that was the name that they were using. Creators referring to the creation of these so-called little pieces of art I imagine they can be. It could be anything that they wanted to make it. All right, thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, the witness may be excused. Yes, I'll have him sit as my investigating officer throughout this trial. All right, all right, do you have another witness? No, at this time we were going to call Dr. McAdam, but I believe a stipulation is in order. Counsel, may it be stipulated Dr. McAdam from the coroner's office be deemed to have been called as an expert, would have testified that he performed an autopsy on the body of Vita Ramirez, also known as Cuddles, the victim described by the witnesses in this case, and determined that the cause of death was multiple gunshot wounds, specifically four of them. Gunshot wound number one was to the abdomen. Gunshot wound number two was to the right groin area. Gunshot wound number three was to the right thigh. Gunshot wound number four was to the right forearm. And that the order that the autopsy was performed and described as one, two, three, or four has no significance, but only for labeling purposes. So stipulated, all right, that's accepted. Ladies and gentlemen, the lawyers have stipulated to those facts. You'll accept those facts as having been conclusively proved. People would like to have all the exhibits marked so far admitted. Uh, that's one through 16, I believe so, yes. There's an objection briefly stated to, may I have just a moment, your honor? Objection to number four, pardon me, and number four, all right, the objections are overruled. One through 16 are admitted. Thank you, people rest. Your Honor, may we approach at this time concerning an 1118 motion? Yes, do you want the reporter? Please. Your Honor, at this time, I'm moving to dismiss the information under Penal Code Section 1118.1. Specifically, I direct the court's attention to the four attempted murder counts which allege a willful, deliberate, premeditated attempted murder of the surviving witnesses Yvonne Hernandez, Adriana Mendoza, Ramona Vasquez, and Luis Sandoval. I move that the people have failed to show that there was a specific intent by the shooter to kill these four persons. I think that the prosecution theory that there was a specific intent to kill Louis Sandoval has been shown and that that intent can be transferred to the ultimate victim, Vita Ramirez. However, 
I do not believe that independent of that, there is a specific intent shown with respect to each and every one of the four attempted murder victims. Furthermore, whereas there may have been a willful, deliberate, premeditated murder with respect to the transferred intent victim, Vita Ramirez, I don't believe there's sufficient evidence to show willful, deliberate, premeditated, attempted murder. All right, let's try another set. Um, I don't that one. Okay, let's get this one on tape. This starts with the court swearing in the witness. Okay, so we're starting off with Marge in the court, a little bit of colloquy going into direct by defense attorney right after, okay? So we're starting off with the court, Marge in the court. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God, I do. Please be seated. Thank you. Please state and spell your name, Dr. Edwin C. Krupp. E-D-W-I-N-K-R-U-P-P. -P. Dr. Krupp, what is your occupation? I am an astronomer and the director of Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. How long have you been with Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles? I began working at Griffith Observatory on a part-time basis in 1970 when I was still in graduate school. And you've been with Griffith Observatory ever since? That's correct. What kind of duties have you undertaken while associated with Griffith Observatories? From 1970 to 1972, I was a part-time lecturer, so I gave planetarium shows in the planetarium theaters. From 1972 to 1974, I was employed as curator and my primary responsibilities were administration as well as the development of the exhibit program for the observatory. From 1974 to 1976, I was asked to be the acting director and in 1976, I was appointed the director on a permanent basis. Can you tell us what expertise you have in the area of astronomy as it relates to sunrise, sunset, and even twilight times? Yeah. That was brutal, huh? Yeah. Let's try that one again. This would be a good one for you on DVD. Did you hmm. That's all right. Hmm. You're all in agreement, huh? Yeah. I heard. Okay, same one. Starts with margin in the court. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand to be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and Nothing but the truth. So help you God, I do. Please be seated. Thank you. Please state and spell your name, Dr. Edwin C. Krupp, E-D-W-I-N-K-R-U-P-P. -P. Dr. Krupp, what is your occupation? I am an astronomer and the director of Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. How long have you been with Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles? I began working at Griffith Observatory on a part-time basis in 1970 when I was still in graduate school. And you've been with Griffith Observatory ever since? That's correct. What kind of duties have you undertaken while associated with 
Griffith Observatories from 1970 to 1972. I was a part-time lecturer, so I gave planetarium shows in the planetarium theaters. From 1972 to 1974, I was employed as a curator, and my primary responsibilities were administration as well as the development of the exhibit program for the observatory. From 1974 to 1976, I was asked to be the acting director, and in 1976, I was appointed the director on a permanent basis. Can you tell us what expertise you have in the area of astronomy as it relates to sunrise, sunset, and even twilight times? Yes. Okay, one more time on this one. Starts with March in the Court. <clears throat> Please raise your right hand to be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God, I do. Please be seated. Thank you. Please state and spell your name, Dr. Edwin C. Krupp, E-D-W-I-N, K-R-U-P-P. -P. Dr. Krupp, what is your occupation? I am an astronomer and the director of Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. How long have you been with Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles? I began working at Griffith Observatory on a part-time basis in 1970 when I was still in graduate school and you've been with Griffith Observatory ever since? That's correct. What kind of duties have you undertaken while associated with Griffith Observatories from 1970 to 1972? I was a part-time lecturer so I gave planetarium shows in the planetarium theaters. From 1972 to 1974, I was employed as curator and my primary responsibilities were administration as well as the development of the exhibit program for the observatory. From 1974 to 1976, I was asked to be the acting director and in 1976 I was appointed the director on a permanent basis. Can you tell us what expertise you have in the area of astronomy as it relates to sunrise, sunset, and even twilight times? Yeah. Okay, so let's try one more. One more set. We're starting off with margin defense attorney. We're in colloquy. And then we get to direct by defense attorney. Okay, but we're starting off in colloquy. Hold on. Margin defense. I have no questions. All right, may the witness be excused? Yes, you're excused. Your Honor, may we approach off the record? Pardon me, may we approach off the record? Again, off the record, defense calls Stephen Hess. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Stephen Hess, please raise your right hand and be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God, I do. Please be seated. Please state and spell your name. Stephen John Hess, last name H-E-S-S. -S. How do you spell your first name? Stephen with a V, middle name J-O-N. Mr. Hess, can you state your occupation? I am a police officer for the city of Huntington Park. And were you a police officer on October of 1990? Yes, I was. In fact, were you an investigating officer in a case concerning 
a homicide at 6344 Benson Street in Huntington Park on October 21, 1990. That is correct. Let's try that one again. Starts with margin, defense attorney. I have no questions. All right, may the witness be excused? Yes, you're excused. Your Honor, may we approach off the record? Pardon me, may we approach off the record? Again, off the record, defense calls Stephen Hess. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Stephen Hess, please raise your right hand and be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give and the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Please be seated. Please state and spell your name. Stephen John Hess, last name H-E-S-S. -S. How do you spell your first name? Stephen with a V, middle name J-O-N. Mr. Hess, can you state your occupation? I am a police officer for the city of Huntington Park. And were you a police officer in October of 1990? Yes, I was. In fact, were you an investigating officer in a case concerning a homicide at 6344 Benson Street in Huntington Park on October 21, 1990? That is correct. Were you the person in charge of the investigation of that homicide? Detective Chrisman and I were both handling the case. Okay, one more time on this one. Last time, margin defense. I have no questions. All right, may the witness be excused. Yes, you're excused, Your Honor. May we approach off the record? Pardon me, may we approach off the record? Again, off the record, defense calls Stephen Hess. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Stephen Hess. Please raise your right hand and be sworn. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give and the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Please be seated. Please state and spell your name. Stephen John Hess, last name H-E-S-S. -S. How do you spell your first name? Stephen with a V, middle name J-O-N. Mr. Hess, can you state your occupation? I am a police officer for the city of Huntington Park. And were you a police officer in October of 1990? Yes, I was. In fact, were you an investigating officer in a case concerning a homicide at 6344 Benson Street in Huntington Park on October 21, 1990? That is correct. Were you the person in charge of the investigation of that homicide? Detective Chrisman and I were both handling the case. 